Hello everybody, this is Enrique again, DoD STEM Ambassador for FIRST Robotics. We're doing a um, tutorial on how to do ISO lines on Jupyter Notebooks. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started by just going to my Google Drive and then opening up a new um, collaboratory Google Collab. Um, this is a Jupyter Notebook. Congratulations, we've made it. Um, the first step of doing one of these notebooks um, is to import your libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and just import these libraries from, um, yeah, I'm just importing some math libraries. Okay, so it executed the cell. How do I know if it worked? Um, so one of the things I, I um, asked it to import was the number of pi, so the number of pi is working. I can, um, so now I have pandas, okay? So pandas is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and read in a, a file here. Uh, let's call it data equals pd dot read uh, CSV. So it's a CSV file. And uh, this CSV file I actually created, so um, let me sh back up for a second here and show you what we're going to be doing today. Um, so th this is um, a temperature field map, and I'm going to be um, creating the ISO lines for this temperature field. Okay, uh, that's the goal. I'm going to be doing this in Jupyter Notebooks. I'll post a link to this um, document here um, that has different different ISO lines uh, on, the, on the YouTube description. Okay, so um, what I did, what I had to do to create this um, was first create an Excel spreadsheet with this information here. So these numbers here correspond to these numbers here, they're the same numbers. And then when, you, when you're making your Excel spreadsheet, um, I added a line, because Jupyter likes to have a row, the first row be like, um, the labels for the, uh, the column headers, right? And so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 correspond to the x coordinates of the field map. Okay, um, so this I uploaded to the internet, um, to my GitHub repository. So it looks like this. Um, when you go to GitHub, you have to just upload it. So if you've never done this before, just um, create a GitHub um, repository, create an account. If you click under the raw data, it looks like this. These are comma separated values for everything. And this uh, URL is the one you want to call. So I'm going to copy the URL there and go back to Jupyter Notebooks. And that's what I'm reading in. So there's my internet data. Did it work? Let's check out, see if it worked. So we just type in data, should be our temperature distribution. Awesome. Cool. So all we have to do is use this function, contour, to plot ISO lines for the thing. Now, contour is a new function. You've probably never seen it before. It, it depend, What you need to have is x, y, and z variables. So um, these are the parameters you've got to specify in it. Um, it's not going to work because I haven't defined any of these things yet. But just like Graphing, you need x data, y data, and z data, right? So what what are these very parameters? Well, z is just the values of your elevation or your temperature field or whatever. So we've called that information data. Uh, and we're almost done. All we need to do is define x and y. So what are x and y? Well, let me try and explain using the map here. So each one of these is a point, and they have uh, an ordered pair describing their x and y coordinates. You can see the legend down here. So this is zero right here, so I assume this 20 is the origin, zero, zero, zero uh, one comma zero, right? One, two comma zero, right? So one comma one, right? So each one of these needs an X and a Y, um, an X and a Y coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and like pop in the X's and the Y's. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this command, np array, to create an array. This is a function, um, so arrays you put in brackets. I'm going to put this as 0, 1, 2, 0, comma, 1, 
comma two, comma three, comma four. So what this does is, just so you can see what x is, um, it's made the x values zero through four. And if you look at the map here, zero through four, he's gonna describe all the values here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with y, y equals np.array, zero, one, Oh, actually, I'm going to do a cheat here and go backwards in order, and I'll show you why I did that. Um, I think I did that right. So I did it. I did it backwards in order. Four, three, two, one, zero. I'll show you why I did that um, in a minute. Uh, just just so you can see why is is these um these numbers here. So if I try to do the contour map, it gives me Boom, gives me the contour map. Um, now, real quick, I'm going to um, show, just add this thing down here called PLT color bar. Um, what, it, what it does is it gives me like a legend here of the values. And similarly, so you can see here, this legend shows you the values for everything. Um, so 20 is purple, which is down here. This one, this one's 25. 25 does this like green thing. So if I bring up the ISO line map, you can see 20 is down here and 25 does this kind of like, if I was tracing the lines here, I would do something like that, right? 25. So 25 matches up. So high five, we've done it. And you can do the other PLT commands like X label and stuff like this. So you can do just like normal, right? And this is how you would do Y label. These are just like meters here. So this is how you would do it. Now, why did I pick zero, one, two, three, four? Like, um, I'm sorry, uh, four, three, two, one, zero. And the reason is um, the origin is down here in the lower uh, left-hand corner. And if I'd done it the other way, it kind of flips it so it's on top. So it's a little, it's kind of a little non-intuitive to understand that. But it, the way I fixed it was like um, going in this order. So if you reverse the order, it kind of flips the whole thing um, upside down uh, because it thinks the origin is at the top left-hand corner instead of the top right-hand corner. So again, um, if you wanted to get it to look just like the ISO lines, that's a cool, a cool little um, hack for that. Um, so that's how you do it. Good job, team.